Hi, and welcome to Cross Course Cryptozoology. Hope everyone's enjoying the first snowfall of the year here. At least I know that we are here. I'm not sure which part of the country you guys are in if you're in another country. But um, either way, I hope you guys are enjoying your winter so far as it seems to be finally coming to a start here. I thought it would be fitting for the real start of winter to, to talk about the Yeti. It's been in the news a lot lately, with good reason. However, I don't think it's been received correctly. And the reason I say that is because people aren't analyzing the situation that's making this subject popular right now properly. Allow me to explain. It came out a while ago that there was some alleged physical evidence for the Yetis found in the Himalayan region, and these samples included alleged hair samples, bones, skin. I think there were nine samples in total. They were analyzed recently, and the news came out, I think, on the 28th of November, so that's just about 16 to 17 days ago, that none of the hair samples or bones or skin samples belong to primates even, but in fact, most belong to the Tibetan brown bear, with the exception of one which belonged to a dog of some kind. Now, if you've looked in the media at all of this event recently, you'll notice that most, if not all, articles that you're coming across are saying things like, the Yeti mystery is finally solved, or uh, we finally know what the Yetis are. There was one article title that I found particularly uh, oddly worded, let's say, and it was something along the lines of, um, we now definitively know what the Yetis are. And quite frankly, that's preposterous, and here's why. First off, this is just as a baseline thing to sort of build up from, you can almost never disprove something. There are very small cases in which you can disprove something. For instance, you can disprove that right now you're not listening to this video because, well, if you're hearing this right now, clearly you are. But when you have something like this, it just does not mean that there's not, it does not mean that there's not an unknown species out there simply because some samples have been misidentified or misconstrued. And, and I don't deny that these are, you know, a, a, a small percentage of the bigger picture of what we're looking at for misidentifications. The Yeti had, especially has a long history of that. And I think that the only evidence that we've still got for the Yeti that's physical, that we can analyze scientifically and have yet to, is probably the Yeti scalp and the Yeti hand. Although I've heard that the Yeti hand has been solved at some point, but I'm not entirely sure. But I think the Yeti scalp is still a mystery. Either way, what we're looking at here is... Samples brought forward, and we've been told these are Yeti samples. We say, okay, let's find out if that's true, and we take them. We find out they're not true. And that doesn't mean that there's not an unknown species. That would be preposterous. I would suggest that it's the same as saying to uh, a Christian or a Catholic, whichever one you'd like to talk to, hey, you know, the, the Shroud of Turin is still a mystery. Let's do some DNA evidence on it. And let's say somehow we're able to prove that it's not from the body of Jesus, or it's rather just from some other person who had been tortured in a very similar manner, does that disprove the entirety of religion itself? No. No, of course it doesn't. I myself am agnostic, so I'm not trying to make a statement about religion here, but I am trying to make a statement about what what is proof, what is, I guess you could say, disproof, and what is what context both lie in, and the fact that it's situational. You know, disproof all around doesn't mean if you find anything wrong with anything inside that the atmosphere of what you're trying to say, then all of what you're trying to say is false. That that simply is not true. Let's say we find a hair on the ground, and uh, I think it's from my cousin, right? So we, for some reason, do DNA analysis, and it turns out it's from me. That doesn't mean my cousin's not real. You know, it's um. I think it's a problem when we take the mindset of jumping to conclusions on any side. And I find it especially annoying when people say things like, we now definitively know what the Yetis are, especially when they're news sources, because obviously you know that they're saying that try and get more clicks onto their websites, obviously. But the point is, is that they're not only exploiting that idea, they are also spreading the idea that that's actually how you should think, which is not true in the remotest sense. Now, I will say that... There are a lot of people who theorize that people are seeing bears and not yetis, and this only validates that. And to an extent, I agree. I think that a lot of sightings of the yeti are attributed to bears. However, and this isn't to say that I 100% believe that yetis exist, 
but there are some cases that I really don't think we can explain away as bears. There's a documentary on Netflix, I believe it's called The Abominable Snowman. It is by National Geographic, so it won't be hard to find if you're looking for it. And in the documentary at one point, they're interviewing a man who lives in the Himalayan region. He's describing that his father, when he was his age, went, and he said he had seen it several times, he went to an American zoo when he was young, and he would see animals and be able to easily identify them. He would see birds and say, oh, you know, oh look, they have birds. He saw monkeys and said, oh, look, they have monkeys. He would, you know, he would see bears, and he would say, oh, look, they have bears. And his son said his father came to the gorillas, and he said, oh, look, they have yetis. I'm wondering who can tell me what the yeti, or as we like to call him, the abominable snowman, looks like. Um, back in 1961, my grandfather went to the United States, and he went to Harlem Zoo. And uh, it, apparently it was the most exciting thing he ever did, because he saw all sorts of animals, like the zebra was apparently one of his favorite, um, because he himself was a horse trader. But when he saw the gorilla, uh, he got really excited, and he said, that's a yeti, it's a yeti. And years later, people would come to him with, with pictures of a bear, for example, a brown bear, which a lot of people think is what a yeti is. And he would actually say, I know what a bear is, but that's not a, a yeti. A yeti is like this, and he would point specifically at a picture of a gorilla. So, so I don't think everyone's seeing a bear, quite frankly. I think that a lot of them are, but I don't think everyone is. That's, that itself is actually just beside the point, really. The point is, is that we have people on a whole. This is a very wide audience is taking this standpoint that once you disprove one small thing that is removed slightly from the core of what it's trying to say, then the core itself is untrue. And that is just, it's not a good way of thinking for any subject, let alone for biological discovery like we're trying to accomplish here. I just thought I would let you all know my thoughts on this. It's, I think it is an issue, although I hope it doesn't turn into a big issue. The mindset that's being displayed here is not analytical. It's not scientific, even. The process of analyzing DNA, of course, is, but the process is not logical. It should be rethought how we look at DNA evidence like that. Because if we were to say that something like that disproves the entire subject, we would not be believing in much at this point. And that being said, until next time.